Dennis? Oh, you've got to move me. What? Think. I've been drinking. Oh, no. I'm not covering for you again, not after what you've done today. Oh, you're stupid! You've got no choice. No, Dennis, I can't. June, you have to. This will destroy everything. Do it! Why do you do this to me? Dennis! Dennis! It's okay. It's okay. I'm a doctor. My name's Greg. What's yours? June Mobley. Okay, June. Can you tell me what happened? There was an accident. We couldn't get out of the way. Was anyone else involved? My husband. He's unconscious, but you've got to help him. Let me take a look. What's his name? Dennis. Dennis? Can you hear me? Dennis? Is he going to be all right? I think so, but we need to get him to hospital, so I want you to call an ambulance, okay? All right. Now, I can't move him in case he's injured his spine. Oh, really? You haven't moved him, have you? No, 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 no. He, he just fell that way. So what exactly happened? It was a motorbike. He went straight into us. Where's the rider? I, I'm sorry, I don't know. Well, I'm going to have to go and look for him. Call the ambulance. Hello? Sir, can you hear me? I'm so sorry. It's all my fault. Oh, yes, yes. You've got to send an ambulance. There's been a terrible accident. Tell them where we are and ask for an ETA. We need to get this man to hospital now. Climbing club tonight. Don't know how you get so excited over a bunch of rocks. Should try and find out. Night night. What are you up to tonight? Oh, don't tell me about the next health and safety initiative. No, I thought you all deserved a break after last week. Well, thank goodness for that. Though you can call those firemen back any time you want. Julie's asked me to stay behind and sort out these charity catalogues. Decide which one I'm going to use for ordering our Christmas cards and stuff. You really know how to live it up, don't you? Actually, it's a very important decision. So you don't fancy the icon, then? Nope, sorry. Oh, but if you're not busy, you could uh, stay around and help me. And join the Joe Initiative of working late every night. No, thank you. There is nothing wrong with staying late if you need to catch up. Yeah, but you need to learn how to combine business with pleasure. Tell you what, come to the icon and we can go through it together over a glass of wine. Really? Yeah, just give me five minutes. Mrs Mowgli? Oh, I'm sorry, what did you ask? Whether it was you that was driving when the incident occurred? Yes, I suppose I was. You suppose? Do we have to do this now? Yes, I'm afraid we do. June! Where are you? Please, look, I, I can't do this yet. You've got to let me see him. Please, look, just five minutes. I'm hardly going to run away, am I? Of course, Mrs Mowgli. Dennis? Just make sure they know that it wasn't our fault. It's not that simple, though, is it? It will be if you get it right. I've been drinking, you were driving, you saw a rabbit, you pulled out to avoid it, the next thing you knew, the bike was coming straight for you. The driver was going too fast and he lost control. I've already lied for you once. That's all you have to say, nothing else. It's important you don't strain yourself, Mr Mobley. I'm all right, Doctor, I'm all right. Doc, would you mind uh, hanging around for a beer? I wouldn't mind having a word with you before you go. Yeah, sure, no problem. Have you got any questions for me, Sergeant? Oh, not right now, sir. One of my colleagues will be in touch in due course to take a statement. I see, I see. Well, they're ready for you now, Dennis. Mrs Mobley, if you could come with me, please. Aren't you going to say goodbye, then? Well, just remember what I say. There won't be any problems. All right, June? June? 
This is Mobley. June. Sure we can't tempt you to join us? No, thanks. I really need to concentrate if I'm going to get this report done. Now, you go and enjoy your drinks. We are working, you know. Now, you do know how to set the alarm, don't you? Come on, Joe's obviously itching to go back to his paperwork. And don't forget to turn the lights off before you leave. No, I won't. I won't. And don't stay too late. You're boring enough about working 24 hours a day. <laughs> So you say you swerved to avoid a rabbit into the path of a motorcycle? I moved out, yes. And then the bike shot round the corner, going too fast. It was on our side. In fact, there was nothing I could do. And uh, what about the damage on the passenger side? Oh, well, it probably happened at the same time. Well, even though it's on the opposite side to the motorcycle? You're right. We must have clipped something. Well, that's more than a clip, I should say. I, I remember now. You know, uh, you know where the gatehouse comes right up to the edge of the road? Well, I, I misjudged it. I think well, Dennis was distracting me. I mean, you don't seem too sure. I think I'd know if I'd uh, done that much damage. Please, Sergeant. This has been a very trying experience. I'm sorry if I can't remember everything very clearly, but, you know, believe me, I, I, I do want to help. Can you tell me why your husband wasn't wearing his safety belt? What? Well, he was half in and half out of his seat when we arrived. Oh. oh well, I, I undid his seat belt to, to move him, but he was too heavy. Moving where? Away from the car. I, I thought he was in danger. Wouldn't that have been best left to the professionals? Yes. Yes, sir, of course, I'm sorry. Uh, just wasn't thinking straight. Have you been drinking at all today? No. Well, only one glass. We were on our way back from a charity auction. Well, that's OK, isn't it? Well, could you mind blowing into this for me, please? Is this really necessary? It is standard procedure, so if you wouldn't mind. Well, what do I... You just blow into here. Take a big, deep breath and keep blowing until I say stop. Stop. That's a positive result. But it can't be. June Mobley, I'm arresting you for producing a positive specimen of... Breath. No, you don't understand. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if, when questioned, you do not mention something which you later rely on in court. I hardly had anything. It was Dennis that was drinking. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. I'll ask you to accompany me back down to the station where you'll be given another test. Now, could you get into the car, please, Mrs Mobley? <laughs> Mrs Mobley? I, I, I can't breathe. Mrs Mobley? Doc! Doc, I think we need a hand here. Excuse me. Am I in the right place for the climbing club? Yeah, I'm heading that way myself. I'll show you. Great. Mine, sir. Thank you. How lucky was that, being rescued by a doctor? <laughs> it's quite a coincidence. You must have messed up your evening. No, not really. I was on my way back from a home visit. And I'm starting a shift to the police station later, so... You'd hardly have planned it better. <laughs> well, your pulse is normal. How are you feeling? I'm fine now, thank you. Will I, um, see you at the station? Well, I hope not. No. <laughs> no, I suppose not. Has there been any news about the motorcyclist? Oh, I haven't heard anything. You know, we really did try to get out of the way, but it, it has happened so quickly. Well, it's a matter for the police now. I could be in a lot of trouble, couldn't I? I mean, if he dies. It depends on the outcome of the investigation. I'm ready to go now, Sergeant. Doc? She's all yours. Sarge. You said you wanted a quick word? Yes, I did. Good, because there's something about this that doesn't feel quite right. Hi again. Hi. Warm me up? Yeah. You want a buddy up? Yeah, OK. Are you a regular here, then? Good, sir. I take it you haven't been here before. No, I used to go to a club in London. Oh, I've got some balls here. Mm -hmm. Where have you climbed before? Oh, uh, the peaks, Scotland, Kenya. Oh, that must have been amazing. Yeah, it was nothing too difficult. Oh, Nick. Sadie. So, what do you reckon? A ground up wall? Kid stuff. Okay. Lead on. Watch and learn. He's a 
well dodgy. Do you reckon Joe gets that much? I don't know. He didn't seem keen on coming here, did he? Yeah, well, he has got a report to do, Michelle. Well, if he wants to locate his life to his work, then that's up to him. Talking of which, we need to crack on. Oh, sorry, miss. I had to fancy another one. No, no. Oh, come on, live a bit. Thanks. Hi, Joe Fenton. Hi. It's me. Hi. Victoria. I tried ringing you at home. Yeah, I'm at the surgery. Mm. I had a feeling you'd still be there. Yeah, sorry, you know how it is. Well, how about stopping whatever you're doing and coming over to my place instead? Now, why would I want to do a thing like that? Oh. Well, I can think of several reasons. <sighs> um, could you give me a couple of hours? It's just I'm in the middle of this report. I've got a hand into the PCT at the end of the month. That sounds fascinating. But all work and no play is going to make Joe a very dull boy. No, I've been putting it off for ages. Well, surely you can leave it one more night. Look, give me a couple of hours. It's just, if I don't do it now... It's all right. You don't have to explain. So, I'll see you later for a night, Captain? No. That'll be too late. But, Victoria, if... Never mind, it doesn't matter. Anyway, we'll see each other at the cookery class, won't we? Yes, but... Bye, then. Victoria? The second reading shows that you are below the legal limit, so we won't be charging you with regards to driving under the influence. Oh, thank heavens for that. But we will need to see evidence of your insurance details and driving licence. Of course. And we might be bringing further charges against you, depending on the outcome of our investigation. I see. Oh, well, um, well, I'll get myself a taxi then. There are a couple of things that you can help me with while you're here. Oh. Right. You told me that you were distracted by a rabbit, yet initially you told Dr. Robinson that it was all your own fault. Well, why was that? I don't know. I expect it was shock, you know, after the accident. Well, in my experience, most people usually deny responsibility. Do they? Most people. Are you calling me a liar? Dr. Robinson also said you said something about making your husband do it? I don't know why I said that. And also you told him that you didn't move him at all. I was... I was in shock. No, he, he said... He said I could have hurt him. I didn't want to get into trouble. Please. Please. You could help me. You could help me. Well done. That's one of the toughest overhangs I've got. Halfway up there. I didn't think I was going to make it. No. You made it look easy. Oh, I don't know about that. So when were you going to tell your Chris Bonington in disguise? What was it, the beard that gave it away? No, seriously, I'm impressed. Why haven't I seen you here before? Just moved to the area. So what is it that you do when you're not scaling the heights, then? Oh, I'm a GP. Met the bridge practice. And you? I'm in travel. One of those adventure holiday companies. That's way to earn a living. Actually, I'm in the office most of the time. But yeah, it could be worse. Oh, do you know what? I could murder a coffee. <laughs> Sounds like it. Oh. Better? Thanks. I'm sorry for uh, being so pathetic. <laughs> Dennis wouldn't approve at all. You seem to be quite worried about what Dennis thinks. Well, he's always telling the boys to be strong. Boys? He's head at Farlingdale, you know, the school. What about you? Oh, I I'm head of English. We met when we started out there years ago. No, I mean, does Dennis tell you what to do? I'm not here to pry, but these panic attacks are getting worse, and there's got to be a reason for that. If there was something you wanted to tell me, then maybe it's easier to get it off your chest? I used to be strong for him. We were a good team once. I thought the new media centre would bring us together, but it's made things worse. It was my idea to raise the profile of the school, you know, attract more foreign students. That's what the charity auction was about today, to raise funds. But he just couldn't keep his hands to himself. What happened? 
I'm sorry. I'm sure I must be keeping you. No, no, no. Honestly, it's fine. I'm listening. No, I should, um, I should go to the hospital, see how Dennis is. June. Thank you for your help, Doctor. No, this is outrageous. You're treating my wife like a common criminal. Dennis, what are you doing here? Are you all right? Are they letting you go? Yes. The second test was negative. Well, of course it was. You shouldn't be here in the first place. Mr. Mobley, why aren't you still in the hospital? I've discharged myself. You really should have let the doctors... I'm all right, Doctor. Thank you. Are they going to charge that boy on the bike? I don't know. Well, you did tell them what happened. Yes, but... Well, in that case, they're going to charge him. I told them I moved you for safety. For heaven's sake. What's that got to do with it? I could have told them a lot more. That accident would never have happened if that boy hadn't been going so fast. There was nothing we could have done. Well, then you've nothing to worry about, have you? No, but I dare say he'll come up with some cock and bull story blaming it all on us. If he, if he thinks that he's going to worm his way out... Excuse me, excuse me, Sergeant. Yes, sir. You are going to charge that boy on the bike with dangerous driving, aren't you? He could have killed both of us. As a matter of fact, sir, we won't be charging him with anything. What? We just heard. He died in hospital a short while ago. What's his name? Anthony McKendrick. June? What's, what's the matter with her? She's having another panic attack. Come on, let's go into my room. I, I think it would be better if you waited outside. She's my wife. And she's my patient. I'll let you know when she's recovering. to get away from him. I know. How could he? That poor boy's dead and all he cares about is his precious reputation. Isn't that what you're doing too? He told me what to say. Like an idiot, I went along with it. I wasn't driving. Dennis was. And you took the blame? Dennis had been drinking. I'd only had one. So I tried to move him across to look like I'd been driving. But he was too heavy. You do realise that deliberately misleading the police is a serious offence? So, tell me, Doctor, do you recommend rock climbing to all your patients? It depends on the individual. Eight-year-old grannies? Definitely. Fit, healthy young women, probably not. Listen, I hope you don't mind me asking, but I run um, outdoor activity camps for disabled kids, and actually, we've just lost our medic for the one that we're running this week. And you'd like me to take that place? Listen, of course, it's short notice. You might not even be interested. But... It sounds like fun. I'd have to check my diary. Yeah, of course. But if you are interested, there's a meeting tomorrow night. Give you a chance to meet some people. How pushy are you? You have no idea. So? So, I'll see what I can do. At first, Dennis didn't want me to go to the auction. But I persuaded him, as it was being organised by our biggest sponsor. For the media centre? Yes. And after lunch, Dennis you know, made a speech saying how wonderful the man was. True benefactor of the arts. Credit to the business community. Saying all the right things. <laughs> Except he kept calling him Roger instead of Ron. It's a bit of a faux pas. He couldn't stop saying it. Roger this, Roger that. I tried telling him, but he wouldn't listen. He just ploughed on. At the end, there was this awful silence. Then he turned round and said it was my fault. That was all the excuse he needed. Excuse for what? To chat up some cheap little tart. You're kidding. I gave him an ultimatum. Either come home with me now or don't bother coming back at all. Must have been a bit of a shock for him. He said I didn't mean it. But when I started going, he followed me out, said... <laughs> said I was the one behaving badly, embarrassing him in front of everyone by leaving early. But he still went with you? Oh, yes, he had to. If I had the car, he couldn't get home. So how come you didn't drive? Oh, I know. I know I should have done, but he insisted. I mean, all I could think of was getting out of there. On the way home, we had a blazing row. He kept going on about how I'd sabotaged our chances. So I told him I'd had enough of being treated like a doormat. 
He said that's all I was good for. So I threatened to leave him. He said I'd never have the guts. That was it. I just snapped. What did you do? I grabbed the wheel. Forced him to drive against the wall. He was really scared. He kept you know, shouting and hitting until I let go. And then he, he pulled, he pulled us back onto the road. But we were out of control. And then the bike came round the bend. <sighs> it's all my fault. No, June. He was the one who'd been drink driving. He's just as guilty as you are. And if you don't tell the police, the chances are he'll do it again. Hi, Joe. Me again. Oh, I'm so glad you called back. You didn't really think I'd take no for an answer, did you? No, no, I suppose not. So? Are you going to let me in? You're here. Ooh, it's cold outside. Well, hang on a sec. I'll be with you. If he's been treating you like a doormat, then he's going to keep on doing it unless you stand up to him. I know. Everyone has to take responsibility for their own actions. You can't let him get away with this. No. No, I can't. We've already destroyed one life. Sorry. Uh, have you finished in here? Um, her husband wants to see her. June, you have to do what's right. What do you think? I'd like to make another statement, Sergeant, about the accident. As you can see, I've dressed up specially. You look good enough to eat. So, what's stopping you? Mm. 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 Oh, I want you. Where are you now? Well, here. Yeah. Maybe we could find somewhere more private. Yeah, come on. No, that is how I like to work. See? Aren't you glad you came? Do you know I hope Joe's locking up properly? Babe, you've got to loosen up a bit. Oh, I think I left my mobile at the surgery. Oh, it'll still be there in the morning. I'm expecting an important call. Yeah. Anyone I should know about? Oh, no, no, it's something important, but I'd rather pop back and get it just the same. Oh, thank goodness I was getting worried. Dennis Mowgli, as a result of information I've just received, I'm arresting you on suspicion of driving under the influence of alcohol at the time of a road traffic accident. This is ridiculous. What's, what's, what's going on? You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if, when questioned, you do not mention something which you later rely on in court. Look, what, what, whatever she has told you, she is obviously confused. We killed a boy, Dennis, and all you care about is yourself. She's hysterical. I am not hysterical. Can you just come this way, please, sir? What have you told them? The truth. You're not going to do this to me! Don't you understand? It's not just you, it's both of us. I wasn't driving! Mr. Mobley, that's not what your wife is just telling us. Why would you do this to me? Shut up, Dennis. I have had enough of being your lackey. Either you change, or I'm leaving you. This way, please. You are a naughty girl. I think we're going to need something. Of course. I'll be right back. Oh. Don't go away. I wasn't planning to. If your patients could see you now. I'm sure they'd have every confidence in my ability to handle the situation. You do have an exceptional bedside manner. <laughs> Don't take long. Oh. 
Ah, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Formula One. Strawberry. Ah, the tickler. <laughs> Is there something I can help you with, Doctor? Tonight, Pat grows suspicious of Sean over Jake's mysterious disappearance. EastEnders at 8 here on BBC One. Next this afternoon, the return of Murder, She Wrote.